Here's another story from the news uh, this week. Um, and this is a company in Silicon Valley uh, called Figure. Uh, full disclosure, my venture fund is an investor in Figure. And uh, there's a whole breed of humanoid robots coming out. I want to talk about three of them. Hmm. Um, and uh, add, uh, the gentleman who is the CEO of Figure um, has built a number of moonshot companies uh, uh, previous to this. But here's a quick video clip of Figure making a cup of coffee. Let's check it out. Can you make me a cup of coffee? That might not look as impressive as it is. I was talking to Brett Adcock, who's the CEO. He's the moonshot entrepreneur in here. And he was telling me about um, a day where they went from programming this hmm. to like how to move the joints and so forth to the day they had generative AI watch a human do that thing over and over and over again. And the right. generative AI model is what the software that drives that thing. Right. So what we're seeing is basically a neural net inside this robot watching and learning by repetition, which is the way kids learn. Yeah. Yeah. So I have an issue. All right, but before, you be, let me show you one other okay, news. Show me one so other this thing. came out today, um, and this is Microsoft and OpenAI are in talks to inject $500 million into humanoid robotics um, in particular with figure AI. Hmm. So uh, I don't know what your issue is, but Microsoft and OpenAI think it's worth a half a billion dollars of injected capital. So tell me your issue now, because <laughs> this, this is my defense mechanism. <laughs> That's fair enough. You know, when you talk about, there may be lots of classes of applications where robots, human or robots are really valuable. Mining applications where it's really dangerous or a toxic environment, for example. Bring me my dinner. But, but, no, I think that's where it falls down. So let me give you the example. The robot um, or the case study? The, 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 <laughs> the, anec the anecdote here. So take a Roomba vacuum cleaner robot. Yeah. Okay? okay. Once you use a Roomba for a while, you stop using it. Why? Because uh, you, you still have to go and prep the room for the robot. You have to pick up all the laundry off the things and da 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 da, and it gets stuck on slanted things. There's like a hundred little things it can't. You must do. have an old Roomba. And by the time you finish kind of configuring the room, you might as well just vacuum the room yourself, right? This is the same difficulty with uh, self-driving cars, where and and I, and God knows I'm one of the people that die. I'm dying for the self-driving car. Okay, so listen, okay? you got a Tesla. And I, by the way, I've got a Tesla that I've driven four times from Miami to Toronto or New York and back. So I've crossed the country. I may be the one of the longest distance driving Tesla drivers, owners anywhere in the world. Okay, I've done 10,000 miles back and forth. Okay, now it's incredibly valuable getting on the highway, hitting the button for autonomous mode, and then but, eating a shawarma. But you don't out. have the self driving beta right now, right? Which which I do. No, this on is my just Tesla. a straight autopilot. I know, that. and and so yeah. the the self driving mode, right, will take me from door to door without me touching anything. A few moments of, you know, being a little yeah. bit nervous, but it works amazing. Yeah. And and Phoenix now has self-driving taxis, Waymo, et cetera, and it's coming. But look how long it's taken. We kind of, we first posited that in 2012, 2013, that within five, six years, you'd have a large percentage, a meaningful percentage. Yeah, we of were off phones. by that. And here's why, okay? It turns Elon out- was slow. No, no, it's, it's the fact that, that driving, which is moving around in a physical environment, is just inherently very hard. Yeah. You drive, you, you move, weave a little bit to avoid a pot. I live in New Jersey, okay? There's pothole center. My apologies. Okay? Um, and, and you weave around a pothole. A self-driving car doesn't see any of that stuff, okay? And so there's lots of little things. It'll get there eventually. But it's like the Roomba. It's just going to take a long time before it gets to the point where it can handle there was those a, things. There was a change this year, pal. There was a fundamental change this year. So I was, still I, so I call it the uh, that's my version of the uncanny valley for, for robots. robotics. It's yeah. like dealing with these stupid niggly. So things what's the uncanny valley? 
The uncanny valley is um, adapt, a physical adapt, adaptation to local physical phenomena is just a really difficult task.